class, welcome to Advantage. I'm Dr. Jody Richardson Delgado, and we're gonna be talking about Psych 101 today. Specifically, we're gonna be talking about research methods. Now, last time we talked about the definition of psychology and the fact that it's the scientific study of behavior and mental process. But there's four goals of psychology that are really important to us. It's description, explanation, prediction, and influence. We don't work on all of these goals all at the same time, but they're all important. So let's say we want to understand something like depression. We need to be able to describe that so that two clinicians that are discussing a client that maybe has this type of mental health issue, they understand what those symptoms might be. So having a description of that is very important. We wanna be able to explain it, explain what happens with depression. We also wanna be able to predict this. So is there a certain age at which we might see depression onset at some point? We also want to be able to influence. Are there certain types of therapies or thera therapeutic modalities that work better with depression than others? Something like cognitive behavioral therapy or medication might work better. Now, in order to describe, explain, predict, and influence, we really have to do quite a bit of research so that we can understand what it is that we want to help people with. One of the hallmarks of research in our field is critical thinking. And with critical thinking, we have to remember that we have to be independent thinkers. We can't just accept what is being told to us. We have to think critically and independently about the information that we consume. We also have to suspend our judgment. We can't just read a headline or one article and decide that this is what it, what it needs to be. We need to really suspend our judgment until we can comb through and get more information. We also have to modify or be willing to modify our opinions and our conclusions that we make once we do gather some information. Because new information is constantly coming at us, especially in this day and age when we are consuming information constantly day in and day out on the internet, through other media sources as well. So critical thinking is a key piece to being a researcher in the field of psychology. Now, we use the scientific process in psychology. We identify a question, we gather information and form a hypothesis, we test our hypothesis, and we publish our results. We're gonna talk about some of the ways and some of the processes that we use for this scientific method. So we might use a case study, we might use the correlation method, and we might use the experimental method. There's other research methods that we can use as well in the field of psychology, but these are the three that we're mainly gonna talk about. The first I'm gonna talk about is the case study. Now, a famous case in psychology is Phineas Gage. Phineas Gage was a railroad worker, and he was working on the railroad when a railroad spike broke loose and actually pierced his right cheek and went up into his brain, causing major brain damage. But it was shocking that he was actually able to walk away from that accident. He had surgery. They were able to repair some of the damage, but not a lot because this was um, several years ago. And he actually was able to live his life for quite a few years afterwards. However, there were a lot of changes with Phineas Gage. And so psychologists and researchers at the time really wanted to interview and find out, A, how he could live through an accident like this, and what were some of the changes that we saw in his behavior, in his mental process. And so they interviewed Phineas. So we use interviews with case studies. They also interviewed his family as well and other people that had worked with him. We want to do some observation, observe him in different situations and see what was different before and after, if people could report on that. And if people knew him, they could actually tell what some of those observations that they had about Phineas. We also might do a record review. Now, in the case of Phineas Gage, they could record um, what his job was previous to the accident. He was a foreman. And then we might do some psychometric testing, like IQ testing or something like that. And through this, we can actually gather and find a lot of information on a specific case. And that gives us some information. However, one of the drawbacks of a case study is that we can't generalize it to the population because it's one case 
And one case doesn't mean that they're like every other person in the, po in the population that we're studying. So while that's a drawback of a case study, when we have something that is rare, it's important that we have cases so that we can draw information from them, especially if we have more cases that come up. I'm thinking specifically about something like Alzheimer's disease. You start to see this, this information being lost through memory, and it might look like dementia, and it, Alzheimer's is one form of dementia, but if we really want to understand Alzheimer's in and of itself, we needed to take some cases at first. And once we've built cases, now we have information about that. So a lot of times case studies lead us to more information in the future. Now the next type of research method is another exploratory type of research method called a correlation. Now a correlation looks for relationships between two variables. And in the field of psychology, we're looking for relationships in a lot of different variables and a lot of different mental processes and behavior. So one of the things that we might look at are the number of hours that somebody studies for an exam and the grades that they get on this exam. And if we mathematically calculate that, we typically will see what's called a positive correlation. So the more hours someone studies for an exam, the better grade that they typically get on that exam. And we've done this research over and over, and yes, it's true, the more you study, you're typically going to get a better grade on an exam. We also have negative correlations. Now with a negative correlation, this is showing the relationship between two variables in an opposite direction. So we might have the temperature and the number of cups of coffee that are sold. And we see the number of cups of coffee that are sold go down as the temperature rises. So we're less likely to buy a cup of coffee when it's 85 degrees than when it's 55 degrees, showing a negative correlation. Now, another correlation is no correlation at all. It's actually a zero correlation. And this is where we look at two variables that really aren't related to one another at all, such as the time that we spend on social media and the number of cups of tea that we drink. There's really no correlation between those two things. And you can see on the scatter plot, and that's what this graph is called, a scatter plot, we really don't see any relationship between these two variables. Now, when it comes to psychology, we know that there is a relationship between better social relationships and happiness. And so that makes sense. We're happy when we're in good relationships and good relationships often make us happy. But one of the problems that we have with correlation is that we don't always know what direction these variables have with one another. So is it happiness that's contributing to better social relationships, or are, is it that our better social relationships are contributing to our happiness? It's called bi-directionality. We don't understand which direction, and we really can't tell which direction these go in. And that's one of the problems with correlation. Correlation does not prove causation. It does not show cause and effect. It only shows that there's a mathematical relationship between two variables. Now there's another issue with correlation, and that's called a third variable. So when we're looking at two things such as happiness and social or better social relationships, we know that there's a strong relationship between those two things, but it actually might be a third variable that we hadn't considered that is actually contributing to our happiness and better social relationships at the same time. And some of the research is showing that a personality factor is what is actually contributing to people rating higher levels of happiness and more satisfaction with their social relationships. So that's that third variable problem that we often have with correlation. Okay, so we're gonna stop at correlation and we'll do a second part to this video where we'll cover experiment and some of the ethical rules that we have under the American Psychological Association. Mm -hmm.